Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. I'm going to talk about open source alternatives in this video. But more specifically in this video, I'm going to talk about what is open source, what is the difference between open source software and other types of software, and then ultimately end with open source alternatives. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So what is open source, right? Open source software is software with source code that anyone can inspect, modify, and enhance. Source code is the part of software that most computer users don't ever see. It's the code computer programmers can manipulate to change how a piece of software or, you know, whether that's a program or application works. Programmers who have access to a computer program source code can improve that program by adding features to it or fixing parts they, you know, that don't always work correctly. So what is the difference between open source software and other types of software? Some software has source code that only the person, team, or organization who created it and maintains exclusive control over it can modify. People call this kind of software proprietary or closed source software. Only the original authors of proprietary software can legally copy, inspect, and alter that software. And in order to use proprietary software, computer users must agree, usually by signing a license displayed uh, the first time they run this software, right? That they will not do anything with the software that the software's authors have not expressly permitted. Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop are examples of proprietary software. Open source software is different. Its authors make its source code available to others who would like to view that copy, uh, you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> view the code, copy it, learn from it, alter it, or share it, right? LibreOffice and the GNU image manipulation program are examples of open source software. So as they do, you know, with proprietary software, users must accept the terms of a license when they use open source software, right? But the legal terms of open source licenses differ dramatically from those of proprietary licenses. Open source licenses affect the way people can use, study, modify, and distribute software. In general, open source licenses grant computer users permission to, you know, to use open source software for any purpose they wish. Some open source licenses, what some people call copyleft licenses, stipulate that anyone who releases a modified open source program must also release the source code for that program alongside it. Moreover, some open source licenses stipulate that anyone who alters and shares a program with others must also share that program source code without charging a license fee for it. By design, open source software licenses promote collaboration and sharing because they permit other people to make modifications to source code and incorporate those changes into their own projects. Projects. They encourage computer programmers to access, view, and modify open source software whenever they like, as long as they let others do the same when they share their work, right? So before I get into open source alternatives, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Once again, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. So here are some popular open source alternatives to uh, you know, common productivity apps. Uh, you have Obsidian alternative, LogSec, and LogSec is an open source note taking and knowledge management app that offers similar functionality to Obsidian, including markdown support, bi directional linking, and a visual knowledge graph. You have Notion alternative, AppFlowy. AppFlowy is an open source alternative to Notion that provides similar features for organizing information and collaborating on projects. Uh, when it comes to Microsoft Teams or Slack alternative, you have Mattermost. And Mattermost is a self-hostable open source messaging platform that can replace proprietary team communication tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. You have Trello alternative, Focal Board. Focal Board is an open source project management tool that offers Kanban style boards similar to Trello. It can be self-hosted or used as a personal app. You have Visual Studio uh, Code Alternative, VS 
Ocodium and VS Codium is built on the open source parts of VS Code but removes proprietary components and telemetry. It's fully compatible with VS Code extensions. Microsoft Office Alternative, you have LibreOffice and LibreOffice is a comprehensive open source office suite that can replace Microsoft Office for most document spreadsheet and presentation needs. You have Adobe Acrobat Alternative, LibreOffice Draw. While not a dedicated PDF editor, LibreOffice can draw open and edit PDF files, though it may have some limitations compared to Acrobat. Uh, To-do list app, uh, you have Super Productivity, right? Super Productivity is an open source task management and time tracking app that can replace proprietary to-do list applications. You have email client Thunderbird and Thunderbird is a full featured open source email client that can handle email, calendars, contacts, and tasks, right? So uh, these open source alternatives offer similar functionality to their proprietary counterparts while providing the benefits of open source software such as transparency, uh, customizability, and community support. Many of these tools have active development communities and regular updates, making them viable options for users looking to switch from proprietary productivity apps. Okay, uh, I mean, those are some of the ones that I, I, I you know, I, I've seen, right? And uh, another, another aspect is, is open source software only important to programmers? The answer to that question is no. Open source technology and open source thinking both benefit programmers and non-programmers because early inventors built uh, much of the internet itself on open source technologies like the Linux operating system and the Apache web server application. Anyone using the internet today benefits from open source software. Every time computer users view web pages, check email, chat with friends, stream music online, or play multiplayer video games, their computers, mobile phones, and gaming consoles connect to a global network of computers using open source software to route and transmit their data to the local devices they have in front of them. The computers that do all this important work are typically located in faraway places that users don't actually see or can't physically access, which is why some people call these computers remote computers right more and more people rely on remote computers when performing tasks they might otherwise perform on their local devices for example they may use online word processing email management and image editing software that they don't install or and run on their personal computers instead they simply access these programs on remote computers by using a web browser or a mobile phone application when they do this they're engaged in remote computing right they're engaged in remote computing so some people call remote computing cloud computing because it involves activities like storage uh you know storing files sharing photos and watching videos that incorporate not only local devices but also a global network of remote computers that form an atmosphere around them Cloud computing is an increasingly important aspect of everyday life with internet connected devices. Some cloud computing applications like Google Labs are proprietary, right? Others like OwnCloud and NextCloud are open source. So cloud computing applications run on top of additional software that helps them operate smoothly and efficiently. So people will often say that software running underneath cloud computing applications acts as a platform for those applications. Cloud computing platforms can be open source or closed source. So OpenStack is an example of an open source cloud computing platform, okay? So that is what I have for you today in in that regard. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and like button. Once again, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. Is there uh, another productivity app that I did not say in this video that you know that there's an alternative uh, open source platform for? Please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.